Hey guys, welcome back. Ashley D. Will here, author, teacher, life coach. So today, by request, I'm doing a video on the context of one of the Dominion verses in Genesis. Okay, there was some confusion about what it meant and certain people were taking it out of context and using it to control people, using it to really do evil. So this is going to clarify that for you, hopefully. Genesis 128, this is abbreviated, but I'm going to read it to you. And God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful, multiply, and fill the earth, and subdue it, using all of its vast resources in the service of God and man, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and over every living creature that moves upon the earth. So that's our verse here. So if we look at the words that were used, we can focus in on fill. That means to populate or to procreate, right? And then subdue means to overcome, to quiet, or to bring something that is wild and untamed under control. That's what subdue means. And then to rule is another one of the words in there in other versions, but it's in the Greek. To have dominion, our authority under God's authority, and to lead in a life-giving way or benevolent headship. So that's giving you the concept of what those words mean and what this verse means. It is benevolent headship. It is a leadership and a, an influence that is life-giving, okay? And then every living thing is to cause to be preserved, kept alive, nourished, revived, restored, to cause to prosper or be made whole, okay? And then when you're reading these and gaining understanding from these, there is a suggestion of moving toward freedom in these definitions, okay? And freedom is a biblical theme from cover to cover in the scriptures if you have eyes to see it. So this is life-giving and it is benevolent headship. There is nothing in here about beating people into submission unless you take it out of context, of course, or anything like that, okay? So it's very easy to take scriptures out of context, and if you don't read exactly what was written by looking under the surface, then it's easy to go off in left field. So you wanna read any verse that you have in the context of the passage that it's written in in the context of the chapter it's written in and in the context of the whole book it is written in and you have to remember that it has to be in the context of the whole of scripture. So those of you who are analytical and drill down and like to drill to the center of the earth, be sure you're putting the verse or the word in context, okay? You don't want to pull it out of context and use it for your own purposes or for your own agenda. You want to leave it where it is and gain understanding and observe it in the context of all of Scripture, ultimately. And that includes the book of Galatians, which is all about freedom. See, you can't ever leave that book out of the context of any scripture because it will apply in some way. Whether it is going to be a future context, we don't know. But And then Galatians 5, 22 and 23 talks about the fruit of the Holy Spirit, right? And so self-control is the very last fruit there, is self-control. And notice it comes at the very end <laughs> after you have allowed the Holy Spirit to develop those other fruits, then the self-control comes. But if we read the overall theme of Scripture and we search everywhere in Scripture, control, the only legitimate type of control that is given the green light in Scripture is self-control. 
So if you're a control freak, you want to control something, learn to control yourself. And that is really impossible without the Holy Spirit. But the fastest way to learn to control yourself is to forget about self-control and start to learn about boundaries. Learn about boundaries, develop boundaries, apply boundaries in your life, and you will just have so much self-control you won't know what to do. But the main point here is just that self-control is the control that is given the green light in Scripture. We are not given the green light to control other people. Now, of course, in parenting, you're going to have to deal with your children however you are convicted to do that. Children need love and order. And so God has given this absolute authority over our children, and that is benevolent headship again. So that would be a little bit different context, children. But people in general, we are not to try to manipulate them or control them. So I'm um, gathering that the reason possibly that someone wanted me to do this video is because there are those out there who would take this part, have dominion over every living thing, pull that out of context and use it to dominate, control, beat into submission, this type of thing. And this is a perversion of the scriptures. And it is giving license to witchcraft and to abuse. Okay? Controllers and narcissists can use out-of-context scriptures to promote controlling other people. So I'm just guessing that that's a possibility of why the request was made to do this video. The scripture says in 1 Corinthians 7.23, do not become the slaves of human beings. So we don't want to become the slaves of people. We want to love them and serve them as the Holy Spirit leads. And that's pretty simple, right? And one last point, talking about the benevolent headship context of this verse and all the dominion passages, there is a verse in Revelation 18 that says, the Lord is coming to destroy those who destroy the earth. The Lord is when he returns, he's coming back for many reasons, but one of the reasons is to destroy those who destroy the earth. And so that would be another proof that this context is a benevolent headship and it is life-giving. Okay, so I hope that's helpful. Just a quick look at the Dominion verse and some confusion that can arise there. All right, so you guys remember to like, subscribe, and share. Have a blessed day and I'll see you soon.